Hey guys, today we're going to talk about the hard fork, which a lot of people might not even know is going to happen. Because with cryptocurrencies and these tokens, you really have to do your research. If you want to take advantage and profit and know whether it's going to rise or drop, you're going to have to do your research. And same goes for when a fork happens. When the, the Bitcoin code is split into two and two coins are created. Breathe in. Breathe out. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, now that we've grounded ourselves a little bit, taking a step back, we can make a better judgment and more logical, educated decisions with cryptocurrencies and the Bitcoin market. Because the last thing you want to do is act on emotion and act as soon as you hear news. It's a good way you can predict how the rest of the world will act, but when you act on emotion, when you're trading and investing, statistics show that 90% of people act on emotion, and when they do this, they lose all of their money and their investments. So only about 10% of people investing in cryptocurrencies have a non-emotional reaction to them and actually profit. And this is why a lot of people are starting to use bots to trade for them. Now that we've done that, I'm going to um, give you an overview about what this video is going to include so you know what to look for and you know what to stay for. Number one, we're going to talk about what is a fork. We're going to talk about some different types of forks and what it does to the blockchain and Bitcoin itself. Number two, we're going to talk about past forks, what they looked like and how they affected the markets and the original coin that they farmed from. Number three, we're going to talk about upcoming forks. We're going to talk about the upcoming SegWit fork, um, the upcoming forks in the chain, the, the split of the chain, and how this is going to play out and what some options are. Number four, we're going to talk about what some markets are doing, like Bitfinex are doing to prepare for the fork. And then number five, we're going to talk about what you can do and how you can benefit from this fork and all other forks that happen. So we're going to go on a little bit about these things. And um, it may seem long, but we have a few different sections in this video. And please stay through to the end so you can make a better educated decision um, coming forward in the next uh, days and weeks leading up to the fork and all other forks in the future. So, on a simple terms, what we would see happen when a fork happens is kind of what happened with Bitcoin Cash. So, if you didn't know that was coming, then you would have just noticed extra coins in your wallet. You would have noticed a coin was created overnight, Bitcoin Cash, and you would have noticed that you would have the same amount of Bitcoin Cash that you were holding in Bitcoin. And this is a simple way to look at it. That we're going to have another fork, most likely. And it's going to happen here in November. And it has to do with the fact that a group of miners would like to do something different with the Bitcoin code. 
Because the good thing about open source is that the world owns the code for Bitcoin. The world um, manages the code. And the code is available to be adapted and changed, but you cannot change the original code. You cannot change the original blocks. But they can fork it and start doing something different from now on with new blocks mined. So basically what's going to happen is some, most of the Bitcoin community is going to keep mining Bitcoin. But some, a group of Bitcoin miners would like to go take that code into a different direction and create a new coin. So that's what's going to happen. They have legit concerns about Bitcoin. It is not perfect. It has some flaws. And one of those flaws is it's not adaptable to higher volumes. So if the whole world is using Bitcoin, it would be very, it would slow down the system. And so there can only be one block every 10 minutes or so, and in that block are so many transactions. So when you place a Bitcoin transaction and it takes forever to go through, that's because it has to wait for um, the space for that confirmation. And there's only so many confirmations that can happen every 10 minutes because only so many confirmations can fit in a block. And what they're trying to do now with the SegWit is create a bigger block. Allow more transactions to fit in a block. So basically we have now um, Bitcoin 1 and Bitcoin 2. Bitcoin 1 is, has the original block size and Bitcoin 2 has a bigger block. But we have to keep Bitcoin 1 with the Bitcoin name because if you have so many Bitcoins in your account, you don't want to wake up and have no Bitcoins, but that many of Bitcoin too. They have to keep the name, they have to keep Bitcoin the way it is, but create a new path. And when they do this, they have to give you the same amount of Bitcoin one that you have in Bitcoin two. Because they're using the same blocks that were mined before. The blocks that say you have so many Bitcoin. Those are the same for Bitcoin 1 and Bitcoin 2. The history is the same. It's going forward that's different. So, if they are basically cloning Bitcoin 1, but creating Bitcoin 2 with a bigger block size, then you should have that same amount of Bitcoin because they're cloning it. And if you have Bitcoin 1 and Bitcoin 2 is a clone of Bitcoin 1, you should have that many Bitcoin 2. If that explains it well. The point is that you can double your Bitcoin. You can take advantage of this fork by holding more Bitcoin than generating. And when Bitcoin 2 comes to existence, you would automatically have that many Bitcoin 2 in a sense you're doubling your Bitcoin. What I suggest is you holding your Bitcoin and making sure that you have access and only you have access to your Bitcoin so that if someone else is holding your Bitcoin, they might try to take the free Bitcoin too. There's many different names for it. I'm calling it Bitcoin 1 and Bitcoin 2 because last night, yesterday, Bitfinex had an announcement basically saying that they created two new coins overnight called BT1, BT2. BT1 represents the old Bitcoin, BT2 represents the new Bitcoin. And you're basically gambling if you buy Bitcoin 1, you're saying that Bitcoin 1 is going to stick and become more profitable. If you bet on Bitcoin 2, that means you're betting on the fork happening and that Bitcoin 2 is going to become more profitable. 
So I'll put a link in the description to these uh, terms and conditions if you would like to read them. But basically, Bitfinex was the first exchange to, to do this, to speculate on future coins, and they do it a lot. Let's go into some other news here. We're going to talk now a little bit about the hard fork and explain a little bit more of what it is to people that, to people that are new to this. A hard fork is a change in the Bitcoin protocol that makes previously invalid block transactions valid and thereby requires all users to upgrade. Any alteration to Bitcoin which changes the block structure, including block hash, difficulty rules, or increases the set of valid transactions is a hard fork. However, some of these changes can be implemented by having the new transaction appear to order clients as a pay-to-anybody transaction of special form and getting the miners to agree to reject blocks including the pay-to-anybody transactions unless the transaction validates under the new rules. This is known as soft fork and how P2SH was added to Bitcoin. So basically a soft fork is just changing the original protocol a bit to make it more efficient, not creating a new coin altogether, which can happen and most people aren't really affected, only the miners. A hard fork, and this is uh, Bitcoin.org, their definition is a permanent divergence in the, bl the blockchain commonly occurs when non-upgraded nodes can't validate blocks created by upgraded nodes that follow newer consensus rules. Not to be confused with fork, a regular fork where all nodes follow the same consensus rules, so the fork is resolved once the chain has more proof of work than another. And this is what's happening right here, the fork. Because when you create this second version of Bitcoin, they're doing it because it's more efficient. Therefore, maybe making it more profitable to mine the second version of Bitcoin. So, we have seen that happen with Bitcoin Cash, which is the previous fork that happened. We see that at, at certain points, it was more profitable to mine Bitcoin Hash. And when this happens, all, most of the miners jump to the more profitable coin. Why wouldn't they? If they can use the same hardware to mine Bitcoin Cash and it's more profitable, they just switch their protocol to that. They download or upgrade software and can now mine Bitcoin Cash. And this happened and it started to get more, less profitable and people jumped back. So hopefully there, this is built in to it so that we don't destroy Bitcoin. We need it to happen where if everybody moves to the new version, it drops the profitability, therefore balancing out the two. Because we don't want a new coin that's going to destroy Bitcoin. That's not helpful. We want a new coin that can thrive and hopefully contribute to Bitcoin and make it better and make it more profitable and make it more valuable. That is ideal. Having two coins that kind of contribute to each other and both have a purpose and a use. So, that could happen with SegWit 2. If everybody switches to mine SegWit 2, then the fact that there's more blocks being mined in SegWit 2, it kind of destroys the old um, option. So reading this again, fork. A regular fork where all nodes follow the same consensus rules, so the fork is resolved once the chain has more proof of work than the other. So basically, you have two options, BT1, BT2. 
They're both speculative which one could play out and become the Bitcoin and take over. But it only goes by which one people use more. So if more than 50% start going to the second version of Bitcoin, then the, the fork is resolved and it moves to the new version. This is how I understand it right now. A soft fork is a temporary divergence in the blockchain caused by non-upgraded nodes not following the new consensus rules. Software fork is when one or more developers permanently develops a code base separately from other developers. And this is what's happening with SegWit. Git fork is when one or more other developers temporarily develop a coin code base separately from other developers. Investopedia.com says the definition of a hard fork as it relates to blockchain technology, a hard fork or sometimes hard fork is a radical change to the protocol that makes previously invalid blocks or transactions valid or vice versa and as such requires all nodes or users to upgrade to the latest version of the protocol software put differently a hard fork is a permanent divergence from the previous version of the blockchain and nodes running previous versions will no longer be accepted to the newest version this essentially creates a fork in the blockchain one path which follows the new upgraded blockchain and one path which continues along the old path. Generally after a short period of time, those on the old chain will realize that their version of the blockchain is outdated or irrelevant and quickly upgrade to the latest version. So this is why there's a lot of uncertainty with Bitcoin and cryptocurrency right now. Because people don't know if everybody's going to switch to the new version and Bitcoin's price will drop drastically. This is what Bitfinex is doing right now with their, their BT, BT1 and BT2. If BT1 ends up being the main protocol, BT2 will be worthless and vice versa. And so this has, this creates uncertainty. This creates worry, fear, and so be prepared for prices to drop. But at the same time, when this fork happens, you're going to earn free Bitcoin, the new Bitcoin, just by having the old Bitcoin. So in one sense, it's smart to sell your Bitcoin and wait, wait this out, wait out this uncertainty. But on the other hand, it's smart to have as much Bitcoin as possible and maybe even sell all your other cryptocurrencies into Bitcoin so that you can double up and then go in back into what you were doing. Breaking down hard fork. A hard fork can be implemented to correct important security-based risks found in older versions of the software. This happened to Ethereum, but it didn't necessarily create a new coin. They just patched up their original versions of their software. To add new functionality or to reverse transactions, as in the case with the hard fork to reverse the hack of the DOA, Decentralized Autonomous Organizations, in the Ethereum blockchain. Non-upgraded nodes reject the new rules, diverging the chain. So this happened because we didn't have consensus in, in the community. The, the whole community did not agree on one way, so now we have two ways of doing it. And eventually, people can see that the new way is better, and we can uh, diverge into the one path when um, a majority of miners start mining it. A hard fork involves splitting the path of a blockchain by invalidating transactions confirmed by nodes that have not been upgraded to the new version of the protocol software. Following the hack on the DAO, the Ethereum community almost un unanimously voted in favor for 
a hard fork in order to roll back transactions that siphoned off tens of millions of dollars worth of digital currency by an anonymous hacker. The hard fork also allowed DAO token holders to get their either funds returned to them. Now on Reddit here we have people saying uh, Bitfinex is treating Segway 2 as an altcoin and they are also recent responsible for the tether scam. I would steer clear. Which is a whole another video for another day, but it is true. Bitfinex just acquired Tether USD. Tether USD is having some banking issues and uh, some some of the world's structures are refusing them because what they they see what they they're doing as illegal, basically printing money. Because after they started having banking issues and after that news came out, they created. Um, their, their creation of coins went up like 500% or 5,000% or something. So when they saw the uncertainty in their future of their company, they just started creating coins. And when you do this, you're no better than um, the US dollar and people that control fiat currencies. You're creating inflation. That's all I have to say today. I just wanted to um, share a little bit with you about what I understand about this and what's going to happen. Before I did all this research, I was selling my Bitcoin. But now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be acquiring as much Bitcoin as possible so that I can double up. So that when this new coin is created, I get the equal amount of it. And who knows? It could go to be um, more valuable than... Bitcoin. So you do want some of it. I'm not going to, at this moment, um, gamble on BT1 or BT2 until I do more research. But I definitely am going to try to hold as much Bitcoin as possible for when this fork happens. If you would like more updates and more information on future occurrences in the Bitcoin community, Please subscribe and hit that bell when you get updates. You can find our links in the description below. Find some stuff that we're involved in right now and that we are interested in. Check out some of our other videos and you may be surprised by what you learn. This is Crypto Keith and I'm out. Off to the markets. Thank you.